I don't know what's going on with my outfit today, but it's kind of like farm boy meets tarot reader and I'm kind of digging it. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, my name is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about herbs and divination today and we're going to do it with one of my good friends, Ariel. This is a collaboration video with her YouTube account which is called Pale Moon Parlor. So many people ask, hey do you have any YouTuber friends or anybody else that has anything to offer on YouTube? And she's one of them. Go check her out. I highly recommend it. She's really cool. The video that she is partnering with this one is all about simple plant health, fertility spells, and she's incorporating one spell into her video so it's gonna be super fun you've got a video to watch after this or if you're from her video and watching this one hey what's up we've got the high priestess card with us today so we are in good hands let's just get this show on the road and we're gonna talk about herbs and divination and it's gonna be really good yeah and I'm super in need of a glass of wine. I don't know about you. You probably deserve a glass of wine if you drink wine. If not, then um, get yourself like a soda or whatever you desire. Have a drink with me. Doesn't have to be alcoholic. This is homemade sangria with carbonated water like LaCroix because there really is like almost no flavor to LaCroix, but there's zero calorie. And sometimes you just need a little carbonated water that kind of sort of tastes like blackberry cucumbers bottoms up let's get into this video shall we yeah we shall okay we ready i'm ready you could read a thousand books about herbs and divination and find out that almost every single herb in the plant kingdom has some correlation to divination work but to pinpoint here are some herbs that you can use in your next divination session whether it's tarot tassiography scrying runes pendulum you name it i cover it all So many different plants can be used to purify a new deck, especially mugwort, palo santo, cedar, and sage, but working with specific cards like suits, arcanas, or just decks in general, the herb list gets longer and longer. When it comes to the minor arcana, which are the suits in each deck, many use plants that represent the four elements, which are earth, air, fire, and water. So let's go down the list of each suit in the tarot and its herbal correspondences. Since the suit of cups correlates to water and emotions, chamomile, jasmine, and rowan complements it well. Pentacles or discs associates with earth, so any earthly herbs and resins, usually pine, patchouli, sage, and honeysuckle are great. Swords relates to air, so mint, cedar, butcher's broom, lavender, and acacia would be good choices. And lastly, wands resonate with fire, so anything fiery and passionate, rosemary, frankincense, dragon's blood, juniper, and calendula are great. Each major arcana card associates with different zodiac signs so some practitioners may look to herbs to connect in that kind of way i don't want to go through every single card in the major arcana but here are a few from the major arcana the fool card which is one of my fave cards ever it has a large correspondence with ginseng because ginseng is known as the herb of cosmic energy and has a wanderlust persona the lover's card Obviously the apple, of course, the pomegranate, because based off the botany of desire, which is another book that I recommended to you in another video, the pomegranate may have been the true forbidden fruit. Also any herbs that are considered an aphrodisiac like parsley root. Now the death card, traditionally death is linked to two specific herbs, which is rosemary and elderflower. They've both been used to place on tops of graves in cemeteries and protect against evil spirits. Rosemary is linked to remembrance of the deceased and elderflowers are used for letting go. The high priestess card, Hey girl. The peony flower is known as the herb of intuition and as a history of use in gynecology. The emperor card, he likes any flowers that are part of the atracoli loads, attract, loads, <laughs> especially sunflowers. For any beginners out there that don't know what scrying is, um, one time I used the word nonchalantly in a conversation with my partner's sister and she thought I was talking about like screaming and crying at the same time. So scrying is the art of divination that 
you gaze into a crystal ball or a reflective surface of any sort, like a bowl of water or a mirror. Here's a personal tip. I really love having incense and candles around me when I'm scrying, and I like to have a dark ambiance when I work, so I tend to use like deep, musty scented plants like rose or sandalwood or patchouli, cherry, or clove. I know some of you might have a strong dislike for what I'm about to say, but it's my craft and I'll craft the way that I want to. I like to ingest hallucinogenic herbs when I do any scrying. Here's a little potion blend that I refill and just reuse this bottle that I got from Madame Phoenix. This is a second sight elixir and ever since I tried this I now make my own and I just reuse this bottle and refill it. This is a topic for a different video but if you are curious as to what's in this blend it's a mixture of sacred water, mugwort, wormwood, damiana, and I think I'm gonna try adding the Kalia in there the next time that I make it, and I should be making some more pretty soon. If you practice hydromancy, which is scrying with a water bowl, many people will say do not add anything to the water so you can get a perfectly reflected surface to gaze into. I say you do you and work the way that you wanna work. Runes are a very elaborate and amazing type of ancient divination. This is another one of those you can ask a million different pagans about herbal correspondences and come up with a million different answers because you also have to take into account which runes that you're using and then which specific runes that you're going to be working with. In my opinion, you have to be very selective with the herbs that you're going to be working with because you have to find what resonates with each other to use the example in the runes and herbs book by Michael G. Smith. The Turizaz rune has the power of active defense and El Giz is more passive defense. So you have to find which herb relates better to which type of protective energy. Blessed Thistle has energies that disrupt unwanted influences and banishment. Pine is more passive and repels negative energy, returning it to its original source. So Turisaz would better resonate with Blessed Thistle, while Algiz would work better with Pine. To kind of summarize, runes are already a pretty intermediate form of divination and requires a lot of background knowledge. If you're wanting to incorporate herbs in your rune readings, familiarize yourself first with the true nature of each rune and find a match with the true nature of the plants that you'd like to work with. Now the pendulum is a little bit different because it's made out of multiple different materials. You can have a pendulum that's made out of crystals, which is the common way, or like wood, which is like a super cool idea. I would love to get a pendulum that's made out of wood, especially like a willow. Anyways, so heliotrope has a strong connection with the crystal bloodstone. This connection is possibly due to the ancient lore of it being the formation from the blood of Jesus dripping onto the pieces of Jasper when he was crucified. Yes, although this is a piece of Christian lore, many fusions of stories have slipped its way into different religions, especially Christianity and paganism because they have a long drawn out relationship with one another. There is is no denying that many Christian tales actually have pagan origins and the blood dripping onto Jasper could also be one of them. Having heliotrope around or burning as you use your pendulum, especially if it's made out of bloodstone or crystals associated with solar energies, it has the potential to grant extremely successful readings. Many people like to cleanse their pendulums and the best way to do that is with water and salt. You can even take it one step further and add a few herbs that have cleansing properties. Thistle, Palo Santo, Rosemary, Cedar, Bay, and Pine to the salt. Figure out what your pendulum is made out of if you don't already know it and find herbs that associate with the crystal or whatever material that your pendulum is made out of. 
Now, if you're a complete beginner, you might not know that tassiography or tassiomancy is the divination of tea reading, and since tea is nothing but herbs, it's important to talk about what herbs you are ingesting for your reading. It's important to use loose leaf tea and not really finely ground tea like you'd find in a prepackaged tea bag. They tend to kind of keep afloat if they're more ground and it's very distracting when you have like bits of herb when you're trying to like be calm and sip on it and yeah. Personally when I use tassiography I have this little jar of tea that I got from the scented gin. There is black china tea, elderberry fruit, cocoa nibs. I also use just a regular Earl Grey tea, but I do know many pagans and witches like to use more calming herbs like lavender, lemon balm, and chamomile teas. Consider herbs just like if you're picking out an incense because the release of properties is pretty much the same. I'll give you like a quick example. If you're going to be burning star anise in incense form to help enhance any psychic abilities, you can also add star anise to your tea to help with your reading. Yarrow grows upon the grave of Confucius in China and is considered the best for working with the I Ching. It's one of my favorite herbs because of the nostalgic and strong wild natured scent to it. So I suggest you use it when contacting any male deities, especially alpha or high ranked ones. It also holds a connection with the tower card in tarot. Ferns are one of the first plant families that have um, evolved. That being said, there's a long history with ferns and its uses and one of them is incorporating into divination sessions. They are mostly used amongst druids. When used, ferns will render you invisible so you can use them when casting a shadow, shadow work, or secret readings. Uva ursi or bearberry is one of my fave herbs ever. It was used commonly amongst Native American traditional rituals, especially in herbal smoke blends like the ones that I have available in my Etsy shop. The link is down below if you want to check it out. It was used to train shamans in divination and prophecy work, so definitely get your hands on some Uva Ursi or Bear Berry, and I love working with it, so definitely try it for any lucid dreaming or astral projection. Blue Cornflower has rapidly become another one of my favorite herbs, also known as Bachelor Buttons. It's a fantastic flower to increase psychic abilities of any kind but especially in tea form, so you can use it in tassiography as well. There's also talk in the witch community of cornflower being used in moon magic for a deeper psychic connection and is believed to help see or visualize the fae. The flower can be used as a dye because it has a very vibrant blue color and it can be used to darken liquids for scrying work. This also makes a great homemade ink. I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out and the recipe is in that link. Now, Kalia Zakakatichi, I'm pretty sure I said that right. Kalia Zakakatichi. Yeah. I've recently just discovered this herb and I immediately got my hands on it. It's commonly called the dream herb and this plant promotes vivid and lucid dreaming and has deep connections with the fae and spirit work because of this. It was used in various tribes like the Chantal tribe amongst shamans and dream walkers. Here are a few reported effects while taking Kalia. Sharpened perception, enhanced imagination, and a rapid emergence of new ideas. Ideas, followed by sleepiness and vivid dreaming. So it's a very potent herb. You could put this in a tea, a potion, or you could smoke it. So that is all I have to talk to you about today. If I did not mention one herb that you usually use for your divination work, that does not mean stop using it. Above all, take some time to familiarize yourself with the herbs that you plan on using in your next divination session. Please remember, intent is very important when selecting herbs because the energy of the ritual is affected. Hopefully this video helped any beginners out there just to kind of familiarize yourself with the terminology that witches usually use or any intermediates that are listening just for kind of a quick review or if you're just listening here to see how another pagan incorporates herbs into their own craft work. A few of you have sent me emails about YouTube videos that they'd like to see from me and I am honestly all for 
all of the options that have been emailed to me. I'd rather make a video that two people asked for than kind of just randomly make a video for the hell of it and no one's really asked for it or have any need for it. So guys, cheers one more time. Thanks so much for watching till the end of this video. I'm gonna finish my wine here and I'll see you in the next one.